Sankara Shri Sthavagarga the Bhagavad Gita because I am Hindu but um Gandhi liked to reference it a lot but what he said is what you said about your family and how you don't how you want to like I treat every person I meet no matter who they are no matter like what they look like as someone that could have potential to do something good. What Gandhi says is, work for work for love alone and not for the fruits of your labor. As, and what he meant by that is that if you just work just to do work, mm. and you don't want to get anything out of return, you just you know, say, hey, John, do you need help set up your tent? Like, yeah, man, I need to put on the start before it snows. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then John later is like, Yuri, did you have food yet today? And I was like, oh, no, no. And I was like, oh, I'll get you something. And I'm like, okay, and I'll be one inside, and I'll be cold. Then he'll bring me some hot soup. And that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's the human condition. We forget that at the, like, utmost start of society was that we wanted to be together. We didn't want to be alone in the cold, hunting for deer all by ourselves. We wanted someone to be like, Yo, Fibo, can you help me kill that thing? You <laughs> <laughs> share it. You know, like that's, what, that's what the human condition is all about. And I think the thing is, what's so magical about this time of our life is that we're almost going back into prehistoric times, but we're bringing back the knowledge that we have now. And I think that's almost too quiet in here. <laughs> no, a solid moment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a all philosopher right. at home. And our friend over here has been trying to come in for a while. I can relate to you. I also got two kids. I got two boys. A two-year-old and a four-year-old. You shouldn't be afraid. Like, you shouldn't. I feel no not to fear nothing. I think as human beings, we're all afraid to love each other fully. Like, fully. Like, how, how are you afraid to love? Like, literally. How, what type of fear is that? Like, what type of lives are we born with ourselves that we're afraid to love each other fully 100%? And I don't view nobody anymore by any color or I'm we're human, we live in a ball of shit, we're all human. Like for real. Like I said it before, I said it in a in a in a and I, I was speaking in a moment and I had my kids with me. I said my kids do not care that you're Republican, that you're Democrat, that you're Muslim, that you're Christian, that you're Catholic, Baptist, they don't care about any of that shit. They just wanna be happy and be loved and play around. That's all they want to do. They don't care about none of this shit that we're talking about. Because they haven't experienced that. You know, now, the only time you can ever experience truth is going to be experience. You know, you could listen to anybody. I could listen to any post from Gandhi, Nietzsche, all of this. And I'd be like, yeah, it sounds beautiful, but have I experienced that? You know? And as at the end of the day, I experience every day. Make sure that I'm in service every day. Make sure that if I see somebody in hell, I don't know that person from a can of paint, and I don't give a fuck if that person stinks, or whoever it is, it does not matter to some it does not matter. I'm gonna help you. You're a human. You, uh, you, this is not what we're intended to be as humans from the beginning, period. That's the biggest lie we were told to from the beginning. Is that the biggest lie that uh, what was the original sin? Sin just means to go against. I'm not religious whatsoever, but it's to go against, and I think the biggest lie was um, believe in the first lie. And believe in the first lie saying that we're not perfect. That's why we live in a fucked up world. Everything is so messed up. Because it's not about how it's gonna look, look in the future, it's how we're gonna make it look. You know? How you wanna make it look? Hey, hey South America, how y'all wanna make that look? <laughs> Africa, how you wanna make it look for you? I just wanna keep you know? trying to bring everybody who's interested yeah, in speaking in on this, so, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, just to speak to what you're saying, I understand that it is fearful, that change is fearful, but I don't think any significant change on a personal level, on an interpersonal level, on a group level, on any kind of level, happens without discomfort. What really causes the biggest change is when people are afraid, when people are uncomfortable, when people are confused. And through trying to figure that process out is, is where we start getting clarity and where we start moving towards where we want to be. What I'm really fearful for, what I'm like really scared shitless about, is that your children aren't going to be able to drink clean water. That they're not going to be able to go visit a national forest and do what like, the outdoors is supposed to look like. And that if we don't do anything about it, that that's the way it's going to be. And that's what really scares the crap out of me and is like my impulse, is that future generations are just not going to be able to survive. You know, like there's a, um, a, a, a man named Wapagekis came and did a ceremony at the square. And he's a Native American man, and he said that this was prophesied that people would gather 
when things got so bad, people would gather all over, and that they would either change it, or in seven generations there will be no life. And I think that's the magnitude of the problem that we face right now. And that like it's imperative that we like work through that discomfort and that fear and like find ways. And I think Tori pointed it out and like you were asking about like the ways that you can you know what you're doing right now, like subversive theater. You're taking stories of uh, rebellion and, and revolution and societal change and telling it to the masses, you're making it accessible. That's already part of it right there. Having this conversation afterwards, right, is part of it right there. Having those difficult conversations with people who are watching the news and saying, what the hell's going on here? Maybe saying, hey, I was actually in a room full of those people and we had this kind of conversation. Just carrying it forward, you know, any way that you possibly can. And you know, if you can't go really out on a limb because you have a family and because you have a job, that's fine. But you have students. You can have conversations with the students, you know, like, and I think, um, like he said, like, there. I, I, you said there's no reason to be fearful. I think you have every reason to be fearful. I think you do. I think we all should have a little bit of fear about what, what this grand quest is really going to bring. But, but we're fearful enough that you should be afraid to speak up or do something about right, it. Right, that's the thing. We can't that's be overcome by fear. It's like to have fear is only natural when we're facing a big challenge. But I think by acknowledging that and working through that little by little, however we can, um, is, is going to bring us towards that goal. Yeah, I just want to mention quickly that, uh, you know, I think Brian's point. Think um, is often not too wrong. You know, I don't think Brian was saying, "Oh, what's wrong with me? Why am I scared?" Uh, you know, it's like, "Oh, well, we'll, we'll solve Brian's neurosis." But um, I think the point is, you know, we have a whole society that's saying, you know, "Okay, the little bit I have, well, if things change, am I going to lose that?" And I think the the question that Brian brought up, at least how it's relevant for me, is like, not, "Oh, how do we make Brian feel better?" But how do we make a whole society feel like? No, stop being afraid. Stop thinking that you're going to lose the little you have. So have to start thinking about getting back all the all the rest they've stolen from you. And I think that's a really tough tough question because too many movements throughout history have ended up with people just getting screwed over and ending up with even less than they started off with. So uh, so I just before everybody uh, goes after Brian on this, I think it's a bigger question than just that. But yes, Matt, over here. Um, actually, I'm gonna let John go first. Oh, okay. Um, I just wanted to say that I kind of found the answer to the question I asked you when you said earlier. Um, you said that the people who watch the news see us as people in the square. Mm -hmm. And you earlier spoke about these messages through media being, you know, forced on somebody. Yeah. So to form your ideas about what happens down there, who we are, uh, as opposed to watching the news and the media, because the media is always going to structure everything in a way that you are fearful. Absolutely. That something about you is going to be infringed on. So the only reason that you're scared is you're told to be scared. And if I, I can I ask you what specifically you are scared of? What I'm scared of is any, like, my children not having food, um, any danger coming to them because of any action that I take. Like, I couldn't live with the guilt of doing anything that brought harm or anything, you know, in, in a negative way to my children, my wife, my neighbors, my family. Um, How do you feel about the actions that you're doing right now that infringe on the rights of children all over the world? Well, and that's the thing, is that, I, and I completely, 100% agree with you, and I said it earlier too, the people that I can't see, I have a really tough time understanding. It's like there's a disconnect for me there. And I think that disconnect is, is disseminated through media that you're told that there is a disconnect when there really isn't a disconnect. You're a parent, and every parent should feel the same about their children as they feel about children in general. Um, so to protect all children, although it might, there is a slight chance of a possibility that it could affect your children, their children, and the children of the other people in your family, and then spreading it out to the children around the world. Um, what world do you want them to grow up in? Because by restricting and by saying, well, I want to protect my children, everybody doing that collectively protects no children. And if everybody does at the same time, then you protect all children. But I, th I think in the same time that it's, this is the kind of thinking, and you know, and I'm going through it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm working on changing my thinking. But I think you have to realize, too, that this is the type of thinking that stops people from getting involved, that stops people from, from joining up. And I think that to make it effective, to make the, the movement effective,